हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द टूडेज लेक्चर इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ब्लड क्लॉटिंग ओके सो इन ईच एंड एवरी लेक्चर वी हैव अ फाइव क्वेश्चन एट द एंड ऑफ लेक्चर सो आई रिक्वेस्टिंग यू ऑल दैट गिव द आंसर ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चन इन कमेंट बॉक्स एज वेल एज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन ओके सो नाउ जस्ट लुक ऑन द ब्लड क्लॉटिंग सो वाई ब्लड क्लॉटिंग अगर ओके सो वेन एवर देयर इज अ इंजरी इन अवर ब्लड वेसल्स ओके सो एट दैट टाइम वॉट हैपन देर इज अ ब्लीडिंग इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी ओके सो नाउ वॉट कैन वॉट बॉडी कैन डू बॉडी नीड्स टू स्टॉप दीज ब्लीडिंग ओके बॉडी नीड्स टू स्टॉप द ब्लीडिंग क्लियर सो इट फॉर दिस बॉडी हैज अ प्रोसेस दैट इज नॉन एज अ हीमोस्टेसिस सो इन हीमोस्टेसिस ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द वास्कुलर स्पाज एज वेल एज प्लेटलेट प्लग फॉर्मेशन नाउ द थर्ड पॉइंट विच इज यूजफुल फॉर द टू स्टॉप द ब्लीडिंग इन द लार्जर ब्लड वेसल्स एज वेल एज स्मॉलर ब्लड वेसल दैट इज नॉन एज अ ब्लड क्लॉटिंग नाउ इन ब्लड क्लॉटिंग वॉट हैपन दे आर थ्री पाथवे दे आर थ्री पाथवे द फर्स्ट पाथवे इज एक्सटेंसिक पाथवे सेकेंड पाथवे इज इंट्रेंसिक पाथवे एंड द थर्ड पाथवे इज द कॉमन पाथवे ओके और जस्ट लुक हाउ बॉडी कंप्लीट द होल प्रोसेस ऑफ ब्लड क्लॉटिंग ओके सो what happen exactly whenever there is a injury in our uh, body at that time we need what we are doing generally at the if, if the injury is on the external side if the injury on the external side what happen we generally use cloth or cotton to stop the bleeding at the same time if injury is within our blood vessels inside the body then what body do okay so that is the similar process body also try to stop by making some plug oh by making some plug so such kind of plug or network is known as a clot okay such kind of network is known as a clotting process clear so in that clotting process how the body make the net how the body the make the net so this is just look the this is the net so, okay this is what a net clear now just look why body make the this net because body does not want to release blood cells from this net okay so the net is very smaller size the net is very of smaller size clear now how body make this net it means the net is made up of thread net is made up of thread and what our body needs to make this thread body need a raw material and what is raw material the raw material is clotting factor or we can say coagulation factor clear so there are 13 clotting factor i already discussed with you guys and the trick to remember all these 13 factor i already discuss in uh, the another lecture okay so now just discussing the three pathway of blood clotting the first pathway is extrinsic pathway second pathway is intrinsic and the third one is common pathway in these three pathway first two pathway are involved in the formation of prothrombinase first two pathway are involved in the formation of prothrombinase then our target is to form the thrombin in common pathway we are doing two thing first formation of thrombin and the second formation of strong fibrin thread okay so now just look the extrinsic pathway why we are calling it as a extrinsic pathway because here the activation process is start from tissue trauma okay this tissue trauma is not occur within the blood vessel it is it is the mechanism of outside of the blood vessel okay that's why the name given extrinsic pathway so this is the happen in the outside of the blood vessels now what happen due to tissue trauma there is a activation of tissue factor and tissue factor is a we can say a thromboplastin which is also a clotting factor and it has some lipoprotein it has some lipoproteins okay as well as phospholipids clear so this tissue factor further activate blood vessels and in the presence of tissue factor as well as presence of calcium it activate factor number 10 which is non activated in earlier step it is not activated but in the presence of calcium as well as in the presence of thromboplastin non activated factor number 10 convert into activated factor number 10 okay now what happen Fa activated factor number 10 further make prothrombinase in the presence of 
factor number 5 as well as in the presence of calcium. So due to the presence of calcium and factor number 5 both involve in, in the formation of prothrombinase. So our first step is completed from extrinsic pathway. Now just look the intrinsic pathway. Here just think in the extrinsic pathway is it is a lesser complex and less time consuming but intrinsic pathway is quite complex and more time consuming because it has some more steps okay so why we are calling it as an intrinsic pathway because it is uh, it is occurred due to blood trauma now what happened in the blood trauma basically within the blood vessels there is a blood trauma means the activation or the things occur within the blood vessels that's why we are calling it as a intrinsic pathway now what happened due to blood trauma means in blood trauma there is a possibility of damage of the platelet as well as there is a possibility of damage endothelial cells okay say so there is a possibility of endothelial cell damage and due to damage of endothelial cell as well as due to damage of platelet cell there is activation okay both may lead to the activation of factor number 12 okay so due to activation of factor number 12 and in the presence of calcium activated factor number 12 may activate factor number 10 okay so this is one step okay then another possibility is what damage platelet further activate platelets damage platelet further activate platelets and these activated platelet convert into uh, platelet phospholipids these platelet phospholipid ultimately activate factor number 10 so there are two factors which can, which are involved in the for in the activation of factor number 10 platelet phospholipid as well as factor number 12 okay and this uh, calcium is also playing role in this now we have a activated factor number 10 what happened activated factor number 10 will convert into prothrombinase in the presence of calcium okay so this is possibility and factor number 5 also play the role in formation of prothrombinase clear now uh, the first step is completed from extrinsic and intrinsic pathway we have a prothrombinase now we are moving in the common pathway so what is the work of common pathway in common pathway we convert prothrombin into thrombin due to the presence of prothrombinase in the presence of prothrombinase as well as in the presence of calcium both may lead to conversion of prothrombin into thrombin now we are able to get thrombin now thrombin has so many work and thrombin has to do a lot of uh, things so the first work of thrombin is what it convert fibrinogen into loose fibrin thread it convert fibrinogen into loose fibrin thread in the presence of calcium okay this is the first work now we are able to get the loose fibrin thread but what happened we need a strong thread we need a strengthened thread the thread which has some strength okay so uh, we are able to get loose fibrin thread now our target is to make loose fibrin thread into the strengthened fibrin thread or we can say strong fibrin thread okay so now uh, we have a factor number 13 that is inactivated factor and the factor number 13 is known as a fibrin stabilizing factor which has a work to strengthen the fibrin threads so what thrombin can do thrombin lead to activation of factor number 13 so in the presence of thrombin what happened deactivated factor number 13 convert into activated factor number 13 now we have a active activated factor number 13 activated 13 factor further lead to conversion of loose fibrin thread into strong fibrin thread so this is the formation of a strong fibrin thread okay so this is how a strong fibrin thread occurs so now just look the here we form the strong fibrin thread okay now we have a thrombin now thrombin has a two feedback mechanism thrombin has to do a lot of work so thrombin has a two feedback mechanism the first one is what it activate factor number five it activate factor number five so due to activation of factor number five there is a formation of prothrombinase okay it so that's why it accelerate the formation of prothrombinase and if the formation of prothrombinase is accelerated then there is a again formation of a thrombin okay then the other work is what it also activate formation of platelet phospholipid 
okay so due to the activation of platelet phospholipid another uh, it also do the activation of factor number 10 and factor number 10 uh, formation of activated factor number 10 ultimately involved in the formation of prothrombinase so thrombin has a two feedback mechanisms clear so hopefully you people are able to understand the blood clots clear jai bharat jai hind